Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kirill Chernyshko, and welcome to the new training session about different SharePoint list types. Today, we will cover with you following items. What is a SharePoint list? Their types, as you know, each of them has their purpose, and we'll speak shortly about them. We'll find the difference between list and document library and learn how to add the list and we'll speak about the list settings, view, filters, and limits. So, what is the SharePoint list? A SharePoint list is a container for information, similar to a very simple spreadsheet. Using a list is the most common way to manage information in SharePoint site. In a list, data is gathered in a rows, and each row is known as a list item. A list can have multiple columns, also known as properties, fields, or metadata. So, a list item is a row with data in those columns. Let's check the categories of list. There are such of them, custom list, documents, communications, tracking, and external. A custom list provide a starting template that you can build on to create a list with the exact columns you need. You can modify the columns and set the settings. It can be used, for example, to keep all information about your departments, how many employees are working there in different offices. Let me show you the example of the custom list I have. This is a custom list I have created here. It has different columns with different settings. For example, the first column has just a text value settings like single line of text. We have as well here languages column with the multiple line of text, flag column with the picture or hyperlink uh, setting where you can put the attachment. Um, the next uh, category of list are documents. Most of the uh, we call documents as document libraries. Most of attributes of lists exist in document libraries. In fact, lists and document libraries are similar in many ways. However, each item in a document library is a file. When creating a new item in a document library, you need to either upload a file or create a new one. Additionally, unlike in lists, in document libraries, each row can hold only one file. There is, isn't an option to attach more files to the row. Essentially, the file itself is the row. We can define such main types of the uh, document uh, libraries. Uh, first one is a document library, and let me show it to you. This is a document library. It's a special instance of a list in which every list item is a file. Files can be Microsoft Office documents, or Adobe documents, for example, PDF files, or any other type of file that the system administrator allows you. Same library you get by default as part of every single SharePoint site. As you can see here in this document library, you can create the file or you can upload one. The next one is the picture library. It's another document library we have uh, I think you guessed already why it's called picture library, because it's the special document library for images and photos. What makes this um, picture library different from a regular document library? Just because it can display the files in thumbnail view. It also contains some built-in uh, information about specific, specific photo, for example, date, size, or dimensions. Let me show it to you. Here, as you see, this is the picture library I have with the pictures. And we, for example, can find some additional information on one of the pictures we have. This is the date. And here we also have the type, dimensions, and the size. There is another library that exists in SharePoint. Um, that's called site pages library. All the pages you modify or create uh, as a part of your SharePoint site, they are all stored here. You can upload, you cannot upload any documents into this library. There is another library you get by default on every single SharePoint site. It is called a site assets library. 
It is used to store all the content and files necessary for a SharePoint site, site to function properly. It is not a library where you will store working files and content. The library is sort of dumping ground for everything you use to build your site. Things are added to it automatically. For example, CSS code, files, or logs. So you can ask, what is the difference between list and library? Um, firstly, as you see, library has one and, uh, or, and exactly one file associated with each item. But list, uh, they, each item can have one or more attachments. Uh, another way to say this, um, list item has a focus on text, uh, storing it, uh, storing fields, properties, or columns, and while library has a focus on a single document. Uh, files um, are handled a little different by search. When a user search for a keyword in a document library or in a document uh, as a content, uh, the document will show up in the search and you'll be able to open it. But when the, uh, when the document is in a list attachment in the, is a list attachment, search will return just the list item. So the user will need to open firstly the list item and then click on the attachment. Also, you can search inside content in libraries, but it's not possible to search content in list attachments. Both lists and libraries generally support common features, uh, but libraries alone support check in and check out features. There are also specialized libraries such as picture library as we covered with you before, and it can store the uh, additional information about file like size and dimensions. And the same files which are attached in the list are just the files without any additional information. In libraries, you're able to upload multiple files in the same time, what is not possible in lists with uploading attachments. Uh, here is another group of lists. Uh, uh, communications list. Uh, we have here contacts, announcements, and discussion board. You can use contacts list to store information about people or groups that are work with you. Uh, also, you can synchronize some of your contacts from your Outlook there. Announcements are used to share news and status and to provide reminders to your team members. You are able to put this announcement on your SharePoint page so everyone will see it. Discussion groups uh, helps you to create a discussion forum where people can post messages and reply to them. If you want to keep the discussion business-like, so this list, this list uh, will uh, help you to manage such discussion. For example, you can require posts to be approved before everybody can see them. The next one, we have tracking lists. And here we have events lists or calendar, tasks, issues tracking lists, and service. With a calendar, you can track deadlines, meetings, sh uh, scheduled events. You're able to set their recurring and all day events. As well, you're able to synchronize your Microsoft Outlook there. So you'll see your events in SharePoint calendar. With task lists, it's just essential a to-do list for a team or individual member. Issue tracking lists. Uh, if you want to organize, organize your project team's responses to a problem associated with a, an important project uh, or you have some spe specific issues such as support issues, you can track with issues tracking the progress uh, of resolving the issue. Surveys. Um, this is the list type is for gathering information. Uh, here you can put a list of questions you want to people to answer and the responses to the survey will be stored uh, in the list and uh, you can analyze them or export. One, the last uh, list type that we'll cover with you is external list. Uh, external list is a view on external, of external data that is contained not within SharePoint, but in external databases and systems, such as, for example, SAP, CAP, or SQL. When you add external lists to SharePoint site, they are displayed in an interface that looks almost exactly like a regular SharePoint list, but with the data that is gathered in external database. So how to add the, 
the list. Let me show it to you. You are able to do this from your site contents page where you have a button plus new and you can select the list. So it will create you the custom list or you can select up and it will show you all the templates with different uh, categories of lists that we have covered with you and you can select one of each unit. Um, if you want to view or change the configuration settings of your library or list, you'll need to use list settings. Um, the library or list settings page is divided in several sections. Each section contains many configuration choices. For example, you can change the name of the list or you want to create a view or change the permission settings. It allows you also to check the previous version of the list and many more. As I mentioned, you're able to create a view in the list settings. So uh, what is the view? Uh, using views is a useful way for a list manager to create different ways to show the information in a list or library. You're able to set the limitation, to set the amount of item, items you want to display in the view, sort, group them, format, and filter lists to highlight the most inf important information. Um, for example, I will show you how it looks like. This is the view settings where you're able to set the name of the view. You can check the columns which you want to display as well. You can sort them and you can filter them. Uh, you can set filters to display only, for example, only created by you. So once you will open this uh, view, it will show only them. Or you can set the filter to create the items uh, created today. I have made such settings to show items which are created today. And this is how this view today looks on my screen. So it shows me only one item that I have created about an hour ago. As well, we have the new feature called Filters Pane, uh, which is available on the modern list, modern experience of lists and libraries view, uh, where you can reduce the number of items displayed, uh, and you can display the data you want to see or filter selects the criteria like location, type of item or uh, different uh, stuff. For example, we have the view here that I had showed you before and we want to show the column uh, of the countries which are, we have the, col the column continent and we want to show only the countries which are from Eurasia. Once I select it, it will show me only this information. As well, it allows us to sort information by name or by numbers as well. And uh, also, uh, lists and libraries have their own limits. Microsoft provides us with the information that uh, libraries and lists can store up to 30 million items or files in a SharePoint list library. But after 100,000 items are added to a list or a library, permission inheritance cannot be changed. Sorry. Um, as well, uh, filtered views of large lists have a similar experience to other lists. However, when a list view shows more than 5,000 items, you may run into a list view threshold error. There are uh, you can find prepared solution from Microsoft how to avoid this error and they are all described in their articles. Um, that's all for today's training. Thank you for attending it and I'm open to your questions and feedback. Thank you.